Hi, this is Russell Sonner from teachertrainingvideos.com. This set of videos is going to look at the space race in Socrative. A lot of teachers get confused about the settings, so what I'm going to do is basically three things. Firstly, I'm going to make a quick quiz, then I'm going to show you the settings that you need to set to actually launch what we call a space race in Socrative, and then thirdly, we're going to run that quiz, and I'm going to show you it from the teacher's point of view and the student's point of view. So if you've ever wanted to really understand how the space race works, watch this video, very short, and I'll clarify it to you. Okay, so I'm logged in to Socrative as a teacher and what we're going to do first of all is we're going to create a quiz and then we're going to launch it as a space race and I'm going to show you exactly how that looks so let's really create a very simple quiz with just three questions of the three different types so I click on add quiz and I click click on create new so I'm in quizzes add quiz create new I'm going to give this quiz a title we're going to call it London we're going to make this really simple just three questions in this quiz and now we're going to try the first question so I'm going to put multiple choice and I'm going to simply write in a question here and then add four options so I've written my first question it says which river runs through London best put a question mark there I have to choose the correct answer it's the first one Thames that's now finished I can add a little comment if I want to and I will do that just to make it a little bit more interesting so I've just given it uh, an explanation of what the correct answer is okay simple as that gonna add now another question so all I need to do is to come down below and now we're gonna try true or false so I'm gonna add a simple true or false statement so I've simply added the statement here London is the biggest city in the UK that is true and then there's a little comment London is the biggest city and Bourbon is the second so that will be a little bit of feedback that the students get afterwards gonna add one more question uh, it's always a good idea to click on save just to save your question now we're going to add on short answer and this one is where the students can actually write an answer in so I'm just going to offer a very simple question so I've written my question what in fact I've written that wrong so it should be what palace does the Queen live in when in London now I can add the answers and I can add as many answers as I want now I'm going to insist on it being with a capital letter so I'm going to write Buckingham palace with capitals because it's the name of a place and I'm only going to offer one alternative if I wanted to offer another one for example if I wanted to offer Buckingham in lower cases then I could do that and that means both of those would be accepted as correct answers however I'm not going to do that I'm actually going to delete that and only offer that as the correct answer again if I want to put a small explanation so I've now added a little comment the first monarch to live there was Queen Victoria so I've written the question and now we've got three questions and we are going to simply save and exit our quiz is ready now we're going to launch our quiz and get the students to play a space race with this quiz now what we're going to do now then is launch the quiz that we've just produced and we're going to launch it as a space race I'm going to explain very carefully the settings and then I'm actually going to demo it and I can do this by being logged in on one browser as a teacher and then on another browser as a student and I'm also going to log in on my telephone and that way you'll really see exactly how the space race works so the first thing we need to do now is to click on launch we're going to choose space race uh, we will stop the current activity we're going to choose this quiz called London very simple one with just three questions we click on next now this is where it gets a little bit tricky and I'm going to try my best to explain to you the settings this is where some teachers get a little bit lost now I'm going to try and explain this the best I can it is a little bit tricky and I'm going to give you a recommendation of the way that I work let's try to uh, take the auto assign way of working so if I've got say for example 10 students in the class and I chose 10 and I wanted each student to work individually that would be perfect I would start the activity the students would log in by putting in the code and they would be automatically assigned a color themselves now what about if I had a bigger group let's say I had 30 students in the class but I've only got 10 teams I only want to create 10 teams well what I would do in that particular case is I would create 10 teams I would auto assign and then I would put the groups into students into groups of three and ask just one student in each group to log in so that the students would be working together I would only need the name of one student in each group and the students could then see the questions discuss the answers choose the correct answer 
and then they can um, uh, put their answers in. So auto assign is probably the best way to work. Now, what happens if you do student choice? Well, if you do student choice, the problem is, is that the students can join any group they want. They will see, let's say that you created 10 groups, so that would be 10 different colors. When a student logged in, they would see the different colors that are available to them and they could join any of those groups. So that creates a problem unless before you start, you decide, well, group one, you're gonna lose blue, group two, you're gonna use magenta, etc. So this is really important when doing the activity. My recommendation, and I've tried both ways, is to auto assign. Uh, colors to groups the students will automatically know which color they're working with and I'm going to demonstrate that now and I'm going to just choose two groups and what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in as a student on two different devices I'll record that so that you can see this actually happening and see how the activity works so I'm going to click on start so we've launched the game we've got a blue team and a magenta team now let's have a look at the students logging in and beginning to do the game so here I am as a student. The first thing I need to do, of course, is to put in the code. Remember, the code is always available at the top of the screen. That is the code that the students need to log into to actually enter that particular room. So in this case, it's T D D R L one S Q. Click on join. They'll need to put their name. So I'm going to write Russell and then I'm going to click on done and the next thing is I've been automatically assigned a color and in this particular case it's blue and if I answered the first question so I'm going to choose for example River Thames if we now jumped back to the teachers view we would see that the first group has already got their first answer correct you only move across the screen if you get an answer correct now let's have a look at magenta so I'm logged in here on a mobile device. Again, this student, because this is a different group or a different student, is also now going to log in. So he's going to put in the code just like the uh, other student did. Remember, it might be three or four students all working together. You only need one person to actually log in. They join the group. And notice, again, if this person, for example, was Tom and they entered their name, they would automatically be joining the group as magenta so each group who logs in would randomly or automatically be allocated a color so if the student now answered this question or this group of students discussed their answer and then chose amazon clicked on submit if we look back now at the teacher view we'd notice that they didn't get any marks because of course they got the answer wrong so this is really important as it's a race to get to the end so if we just quickly continue this race just a little bit second question this, this group blue submit their answer and they get it correct now of course we can see that blue has moved across the screen even more if we go back to magenta they're coming on to their second question they get the answer right as well so finally now they will be off the mark and moving across the screen and we can see them now once the game's over the teacher can click on finish that is how the space race works the magenta team are just putting in their last answer and we're also going to get the uh, blue team to put in their last answer. Neither of them got the answer right. Uh, the game is now over. The teacher can now click on finish. And one of the things that the teacher can now do is click on view chart and see. And you can see how Tom got on, how Russell got on and see which answers they got wrong or right. So the uh, feedback is a really useful feature. That is how the space race works so keep in mind the settings and keep the advice that i'm saying use the automatic allocation think carefully about the way you're going to organize your groups before you start and remember you can have two or three students working together and just working on one device and answering the questions this is russell sanner from teachertrainingvideos.com really hope you found those videos useful on working with socrative and looking only at the space race 
If you come to teachertrainingvideos.com, there are lots more free videos. You can sign up to the newsletter if you want. There's a special offer at the moment if you sign up and you get some free premium videos and all the latest updates on all the new videos that I've created, short courses that I'm running, webinars, etc. If you're not interested in signing up to the newsletter, you can just click here. Now, one particular area that you might find interested if you like tools like Socrative and tools like Kahoot, very similar, is to look at the mobile smartphone. So lots of more videos there on how to use Kahoot and how to use Quizlet and how to use uh, Socrative. Another very popular section on this uh, website is Russell's five minute blog with really quick videos that show you different technologies that you can use in your teaching and learning and I try to take you through them very quickly and finally another area that you might find interesting is the YouTube channel if you sign up to the YouTube channel then you'll find that uh, there are lots more videos on the YouTube channel that are not available uh, on the uh, on in the main website and another very popular section is Russell's top 12 videos it shows you the most popular videos on the site thank you very much